Good morning from Zagreb. We arrived here last night and we're staying at the HI Hostel Zagreb. The girls that we are sharing a room with left very early this morning, so we've just had the room to ourselves, which meant that we could get changed in here and have our stuff everywhere and make as much noise as we wanted, which for a hostel, when you're sharing a room, it means quite a lot. It's quite novel. Yeah. Definitely haven't had that up to now, so no. that's been nice. For the first time, but definitely not the last time on this trip, then we have had a bit of a snafu with accommodation because we done goofed. So we initially were planning on moving hostels this evening to a different one, which is only about half a kilometer down the road. But I can't remember which one of us booked it. Probably doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. Might have been me, who knows. But essentially we managed to book two hostels for the same night rather than two hostels for consecutive nights. So rather than packing up all of our stuff and taking it somewhere else, we've just opted to go for another night here, uh, which has been very readily accepted. We just got that sorted out. So for the first time in quite some time, we're actually staying in the same place. Yeah. For two nights. It's nice that we don't have to pack up our things, but... Yeah. It wasn't really a big deal. No. I mean, there's lots of availability at the moment, so we weren't worried about not having somewhere to stay. And in the end, this is a good location. The hostel is actually very clean. The beds are a little bit uncomfortable, but honestly, for the price of it, it's totally fine. And in the end, this really hasn't cost us much because we only had a deposit on the one we thought we were going to be staying at tonight. And that hostel is a little bit more expensive than this one anyway. So this whole experience may have cost us at most an extra euro or two since we hadn't paid for it in full anyway. So it's actually shaking out pretty well, all things considered. So yeah, every cloud. Anyway, we are going to get on with our day in mm -hmm. Zagreb. Yep. First of all, coffee. Next of all, free walking tour. So let's get it. It's remarkable how light it is. I feel like a lot of North American pastries are super dense. This was fantastic. Highly recommend. Best pastries we've had so far. And really good coffee too. Did you know that neckties were created in Croatia? Croat, cravat. This is St. Mark's Cathedral. And if you're wondering why there's scaffolding and construction everywhere, it's because they had two earthquakes in 2020. Happy New 
is Bloody Bridge, which as you can see is no longer a bridge, it's just a street, but it used to divide the secular and non-secular parts of the city, which are at war, hence why Bloody Bridge, because the water was supposedly red from all the blood. This building, which is under construction, used to be a brothel, and how you could tell if the person you wanted to see was available was if the gnome was standing, then she was available, but if the gnome was horizontal, then she was also horizontal. Our tour ended just as this started. How lucky are we? And that was the end of the tour. We went through a company called Free Spirit and our guide, Viv, was absolutely fantastic. He was so funny, had so much energy, and just knew so much. And so, yeah, I think between that and all of the other tours that we've had, I think he's probably been the best one today. 100%. So that was really good. Um, we're now kind of around lunchtime, so we're thinking of trying to get some food. But after that, one of the things that we've learned is that Zagreb is close to about 100 plus museums, all in what's quite a small city. So we're going to check out a couple because obviously it's raining cats and dogs out. <laughs> and it will be for the rest of the day. Exactly. So we've been recommended a couple. One of them is a chocolate museum, which I'm personally very excited about. But there is another one which is a little bit obscure, and it's called the Museum of Broken Relationships. So, um, yeah, let's give it a go. The Museum of Broken Relationships costs seven euros to get into, and basically it is a bunch of objects that have an accompanying story about a broken relationship with them. And I really liked the fact that along with the story, there was often a life lesson, which I found comforting because love is such a universal language it's a universal emotion. It's something that everyone experiences and you're never alone. And I really found that no matter why the relationship breaks up, even if it's something bad, hopefully there is a lesson that you can take away from it and that it helps you grow as a person. Each of the anecdotes that went with each of those items, I just found really moving. Uh, because with each of them there was some kind of really interesting story. There was always really good context and a reason why it was so significant. And I think really as mentioned, love is universal and therefore at the same time grief is also universal. Um, I heard in a TV show that what is grief if not love? Persevering. And really, it's something that everybody goes through, and really it just meant that these things really meant something to you. And that sentimentality is really something that we could all get behind. And so for me, I thought, honestly, like one of the most interesting, but also one of the most beautiful collections I think I've seen in a museum before. Like it's unlike anything else that you'll ever experience as you go through it, but it is a very worthwhile experience. I think I also like the fact that with the way that the tour guide had initially presented it, it was really kind of, we thought it was going to be more about oh, just relationships gone sour and therefore funny or good or bad anecdotes associated just mm. with that. But it was the fact that there was just a plethora of different relationships that everybody had. Mm -hmm. So it could have been a close family friend, it could have been a loved one, it could have been parents and child, child and parent. But it even kind of went through some other things where it's just like one person's relationship with food because they ended up losing the ability to enjoy a specific food stuff. And then there was another one who was going through a battle with cancer, had to have a mastectomy, and therefore was grieving the relationship with her own body. And it's interesting because really, I think with a lot of people when it comes to relationships, then like that grieving process is really difficult. Mm. And as a result, we kind of, rather than necessarily confront a lot of these things head on, we tend to run away from it or just try and forget it and forget that it ever happened. Whereas this is really just a beautiful way of kind of bringing some catharsis to it. And I think it showed in the stories that some people have moved on and other people are just going to be carrying 
this forever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So whatever you're doing in your personal life, this gave you permission that it's okay. Absolutely. We just made the quick five minute walk in the pouring rain to the Chocolate Museum. The Chocolate Museum was another unique experience. You pay nine euros per person to go in and they give you a box of chocolates that contains seven samples. And the seven samples correspond with the seven different rooms that you go into. So the first room is about the Mesoamerica or Central American beginnings of chocolate with the Aztec and Maya population. The second room was about how when the Spanish conquered the Aztec population, they discovered chocolate. And then the third room was about how the rest of Europe finally discovered chocolate and Spain stopped keeping it a secret. And it's really interesting because it then just gives you a kind of one of the full history of the chocolate and kind of each of the chocolates that you get given is kind of aligned with when it was widely consumed and discovered. And I think probably the other really cool thing is, is talk, it talks about the manufacture process, how that developed over time, how it became historically and culturally significant. And we kind of came because we were told there were free samples, but it ended up being a genuine history lesson. Yeah, it turned out to be so much more. And you got to see how chocolate was marketed mm. and how like the original companies came to be, yep. like Newhouse and Cadbury and Toblerone. And Lint and all of that stuff. So that was interesting. And then basically how chocolate got democratized and it went from being something that only the wealthy, rich and important politicians in society consumed or royalty to how it was democratized to adults, the commoner, and then finally became most popular with children. Probably my favorite room, I think this was mm. universally popular, is that among your free samples, obviously you get kind of a selection of small chocolates and even like an actual roasted cacao bean. But in the middle, you also get given a spoon. You don't quite find out until about midway through when you're then presented with this room and you literally have a melted chocolate dispenser. Mm -hmm. So you can have white, milk or dark, all of which are such good quality. Wait for, we did and. Well, at a time, uh -huh. of course. You're not going to load the spoon with all three of them mm -hmm. unless you really want it to be daring. But basically they said at the very beginning, the amount you can have is unlimited, mm -hmm. which is an extremely dangerous concept. And we were in between some school groups and probably had it not been for the teachers kind of ripping them away from it and it just kept going. So for nine euros, yeah, it was definitely time well spent. And also in the shop, then it looks like you definitely had the option to uh, make some very shoot purchases with a lot of things only being about like three euros a pop so considering the fact that it was a rainy day and the heavens absolutely opened after our walking tour then i think those two museums were a really nice way to spend the afternoon absolutely mm -hmm. we're gonna go relax and hang out now so until the next time take care and keep smiling good morning from Zagreb. It is raining here today and we got in last night. We stay... No. Uh, but yeah, we, for not, well definitely not for the first time um, on this, well, it is the first time. time. Yeah. The chocolate? No. Can you move on?